What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. All right, in today's topic, we're gonna talk about does it make a difference where you go to medical school? Now, currently, the month I'm in is March. Um, you know, we're a couple months away from June, which is when the AMCAS application opens up for medical school. And every year when I work with students, um, who are applying to medical school, you know, I kind of advise them through the whole process. Every year, people ask me the exact same question. Does it matter where I go to medical school? Um, you know, my mom's telling me I need to go to Johns Hopkins or I have to go to Stanford, etc. something as this. Does it really matter more or can I go anywhere? Well, here's my never humble and biased opinion on this. I really don't think it matters where you go to medical school. Um, and that's, of course, there's caveats that I'll tell you real quick. Number one, I'm assuming that you're gonna go to a USMD school. Now, if you're looking at DO or IMG, I'll mention that in a few moments in this video. But let's just focus on the topic of going to a California or a New York or any of the 50 states in the US MD school. Does it matter if you study at the University of Nevada, the University of Arizona, University of Louisiana, University of California, San Diego, or somewhere in New York? Does it really make a difference as opposed to you going to Stanford or UCSF or Hopkins or even Harvard, does it really make a difference? Well, of course, those schools are different for a reason. Um, I mean, schools that are traditionally top tier and that you probably know as like a um, home name, such as the Harvards and the Hopkins and the Stanfords, they have a lot of what's called NIH grant funding. NIH grant funding is research funding. Um, so faculty that are PhDs or MD scientists or MD PhDs who are doing research, um, they like send out grants to the NIH and they ask for money and if they do a good job and their grant looks um, promising, the NIH will give them lots of money. And some of that money goes to the institution and that's like profit for the institution. So these big names that you're familiar with and maybe your parents are telling you you should be going there for your training, um, have a lot of this NIH grant funding for research. Um, so that makes those schools actually quite interesting of a learning experience if you're interested in research. Um, and that is, you know, if you want to study research or if you want to be involved, going to one of these schools is absolutely going to be in your favor um, because, sorry, there's police going by, um, because they're going to have the research laboratories, the world-renowned experts, the physician scientists or the scientists who are there and you could try to join their lab, communicate with them, etc. Um, and if you're that type of person who has that kind of interest, then yes, those schools will absolutely be of interest to you and in your favor because you are already research oriented and you want that exposure. Now, let's just say you're an average medical student. You're like, okay, I want to go to medical school. I want to spend my first two years just, you know, doing the basic sciences, then, then I'll study and take U.S. Assembly Step 1, you know, do the best I can, then go on to the clinical years, um, you know, take Step 2, and then apply for residency and match and move on with my life. Well, if you're a traditional medical student, which is the mass majority of medical students, that process, which I de just described, which is going through medical school, is the same everywhere. And that's kind of the depressing part. It doesn't matter where to go to medical school if you're just a normal person, if you're like everyone else who wants to be a doctor. It's a very small and rare percentage of people who at this early age have a real research inkling. Uh, most people who may even be exposed to research as a pre-med, who may be interested in it, don't really quite understand, unfortunately, yet the long-term implications of it. Um, being a physician scientist, being you know, being in an academic career, or having a life of research is very different than what you may expect, um, and not a lot of people know that at an early age. So if you're a normal person that just wants to go to medical school and become a doctor, it really doesn't make a difference. And the reason why is pretty crazy. Because the medical students who are sitting at your local state school or across the nation or in the middle of the nation, um, they all study the exact same things. The first two years of medical school are called the basic science years. And what you study are pretty much the same books, the same resources as everyone else. And here's the weird part. Most people these days are not going to lecture. I mean, I, oh, I feel kind of outdated now, but like when I was in college, we went to lecture every day. And even when I was in medical school, I still went to lecture every day. But at that time was the transition in which we started to see people less and less going to lecture. And now from what I hear from faculty who are teaching, the 
medical student lecture attendance rate is extremely small and now a lot of schools are still even focusing on you know creating podcasts or video lectures for students to learn at home now the problem with this is that it really doesn't matter who's giving you a lecture if you're gonna get a lecture about let's just say Alzheimer's disease and you're gonna have someone talk to you about tau protein and what it's gonna be in Alzheimer's disease and you have a world-renowned expert in Alzheimer's disease PhD or MD PhD or whatever giving you that lecture at a big-name institution the reality is that person's information is going to be absolutely amazing it can be cutting-edge any question you have that person can likely answer it for you but when the real rubber hits the road and you're a medical student and your ultimate goal is, well, I just wanna learn what I need to learn to pass all my classes, to do well on step one, because med school is hard enough, you're going to realize that most medical students don't really attend lecture. They don't really care um, what faculty is teaching them because all people who are going to medical school across the nation are really all using the same resources now, which is pretty wild. Um, you know, if you want to study pathology, most people are studying uh, Pathoma, you know, the online source from that guy from Chicago. So whether you're at Harvard or you're at University of um, California, Arizona, Nevada, wherever, everyone's doing Pathoma. Um, or if you're studying microbiology, uh, before everyone used microbiology made ridiculously simple. Everyone now uses sketchy micro. The point being, it doesn't matter who's giving you the lecture because you're all using the same books and online resources now. That's the wild part. Um, so that's why I think it really doesn't make a difference for the basic science years where you go to medical school because once you get into medical school you start to feel the pressure and all the exams and that you want to do well and you want to learn high yield board info to get a good step one score you're going to buy all the same resources online and book like everyone else so that you get a good board score you're you almost become numb to what your you know administration or what your faculty is doing and that's really depressing because that's what med school used to be all about going to lecture and interacting with your faculty and it doesn't seem like people are doing that anymore or it's very rare now what about the third and fourth years or clinical years does it make a difference if you go to some medical school or another one still i don't really think so because as a medical student you're just learning the basics um you know, you're, you're going to be doing your core rotations, general surgery, internal medicine, pediatrics, OB-GYN, uh, neurology, etc. It's all just basic things you're learning. Whether or not you interact with extremely well-known uh, subspecialized faculty may or may not affect your decision on career. And of course, it's better to get exposure to more interesting faculty and more people who are teaching oriented than not. So there's no downside to going to a you know top tier school. But my point being, it doesn't really make a difference at this level because you're just learning the basics. When, I mean, take for example, an article came out like a couple days ago that UCSF Dermatology now has a clinic for people of color. Pretty unique, most dermatology clinics are just dermatology clinic. But UCSF, being innovative, now has their own clinic for people of color. Now, as a medical student, if you go and rotate in that dermatology clinic, frankly, a lot of what they're going to be talking about is above your level of training. Um, I mean, if you're doing a dermatology rotation, you're probably interested, but you're still learning the basics. You know, you don't have enough high-end understanding to appreciate the higher level work they're doing. And that's unfortunately true. When you're in internal medicine, you're just trying to learn how do I treat infections? How do I understand laboratory values? What are electrolytes? How do I replete them? How do I read imaging, etc.? The basics. So there is no harm to going to any medical school because you're all gonna learn for the most part the same thing. Of course, again, if you can get into a more quote unquote top tier medical school, then you may have exposure to different ways of thinking. Maybe they have more organized um, like monthly journal or clubs where you can have like a bit of an interesting discussion with a faculty who understands the statistics of clinical trials or with someone who understands kind of cutting edge therapy and kind of just expose and widen your horizon there's absolutely no harm to that but my point being it's not vital so taking into account all of this if you're going to a USMD school yeah if you go to a top tier school like we're mentioning there is some more research experience or research opportunities that are going to be there for you during your basic science years, yeah, hopefully the faculty, you'll have the opportunity, if you want to take advantage of it, to talk to some more renowned or subspecialized faculty. And then during your clinical years, 
maybe it's organized better or again the faculty are going to give you a more unique experience or you're able to go into a more unique you know subspecialty training for your small rotations and again these are all things you could take advantage of but frankly they're not that big of a thing i mean if you can get into these schools fantastic go take your opportunities enjoy but what if you're the other large percentage of people who are applying to medical school what about you the fact that you're going to university of whatever is that a downfall absolutely not and to be frank that's why i'm making this video so many people are worried that they, they didn't go to some big name fancy fancy school and my point is it really doesn't make a difference if you want to be a physician enter medical school get in wherever you can in the u.s um, study for your basic science years, do well in your clinical rotations, do well in your board exams, get good letters, apply to residency, you should match somewhere well. You know, you're a good applicant. So that's my rationale. Don't worry about trying to get into one of few schools that have a certain name or brand. Just get in anywhere, become a doctor, earn your physician degree, get your MD, and move on with life. Because where you go to residency really does matter then. Because that's where you kind of develop into the doctor or specialist that you'll become for life. Those faculty at the residency program are who you're going to be working with very intimately. They're the people who are going to be training you, uh, training the way you think, the way you work up patients, the way you examine patients, um, or a surgeon, the way you operate on patients. So your residency training, oh man, I completely different answer from does it matter where you go to medical school? It absolutely matters where you go to residency because you should be going somewhere that fits you and is a good learning opportunity. So that's my take on, does it matter where you go to medical school? If you're going to a, a US MD school, go anywhere, get in, study hard, get into the residency that you want. And then after that, a lot of your residency training or fellowship training after that will affect much of your career and who you become. Now, what if you're saying, okay, maybe I wanna to go to a Caribbean school or maybe I wanna to go to a USDO school. And again, USDO is gonna be in the same category of the USMD. I really don't think it makes a difference. Go where you can get accepted. Maybe there are some schools that have a better reputation than others. Some of the DO schools may be newer. Some may have difficulty of, you know, they may accept too many people in the class or whatever. That pretty much is small details as well. If you're applying mainly to DO schools and that's where you think you can get accepted, perfectly fine. Apply to as many as you can and just get in and move on. Again, don't worry about the details. And really with the DO schools, there's not this big tier difference between these big research funded schools and not. So that doesn't really have to apply, thankfully. It's a lot more simple. Just get in, get your DO, apply to residency, move on with life, enjoy being a doctor. Now, what if you're going to a Caribbean school? Now that gets really tricky and you can't really make good general advice on that because that depends on the school. There are absolutely some schools that have a better reputation than others. There's no question there. And in my opinion, if you're thinking of applying to a Caribbean school, really talk to someone who's an expert or someone who has been to a Caribbean medical school or teaches one who knows a little bit more than just, oh, I'm another person who read online about it. I'm not an expert in Caribbean medical schools. You, I can't give you solid advice. You've got to seek out someone who graduated from the program and really ask them their opinion. That's the best person because they have firsthand experience. And if you can talk to a few people who have graduated from a few different schools you're looking at, then you can really increase your odds of getting a better sense of what that school is really like. What are their shortcomings? What are their concerns? And what's really good about them? And can you do well in that school and study well? Um, and that's kind of not a as long of an answer as I gave for the MD schools, but that's because, again, Caribbean schools are very different, and I don't want to lead you astray, and I'm not an expert in them. So, But what I think you have to do is really talk to as many people as you can who graduated from one of the Caribbean schools you're interested in and get their honest opinion of what they thought were the pros and cons. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that provides some degree of relief when it comes to applying to medical school as to does it really matter where you can get in. Obviously, get into the best school you can. Get into the school that gives you the best fit, where you have a strong social and emotional support from family and friends, and so you can do well. But I don't want you sitting around and agonizing and adding more stress to your life about the minutia of what if I go here, what if I go there. Just get in, get accepted, study hard, move on to residency, enjoy your life. Life. It's only going to get better every step of the way. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed your bit. I hope you enjoyed this video. Any questions down in the comment section below? I read them all. I try to reply to them. Uh, and as always, enjoy your studies.